Hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Professor Govala, and today I'll be talking to you about a DC to DC buck converter. And essentially, what we'll prove by the end of this video is that we can step down the voltage, V will go down, by increasing our currents. And we do that by using this schematic shown here. And essentially in red, we can rewrite or redraw this circuit as a circuit that has an inductor attached to a capacitor and an R load. And essentially when this switch is down, we get five volts through. And when the switch is up, the current rushes to ground and we get zero volts through and it keeps on switching like a clock with a period T and a frequency one over T. And we could say then that there's a duty cycle from here to here, which is the duty cycle times T and from here to here, which is one minus the duty cycle times T, where again, this is zero. So this is the working principle of the input or this portion of the buck converter. Now, what is a buck converter used for? First off, we have other components like a voltage divider. So we could say other circuits like a voltage divider. And a linear voltage regulator can reduce the input voltage. For example, if you have a circuit like this, where this is 2 and this is 2, V in, V out is basically 2 over 2 plus 2 times V in, which is 1 half V in. And we could say that these devices, though, though they reduce the, they step, although they step down the input voltage, they reduce the voltage, they review, reduce voltage by dissipating power as heat. where the buck converter circuit reduces the voltage, the buck converter circuit reduces the voltage, but not by dissipating power. As heat but by stepping up the current. So essentially what happens is as V goes down, I goes up. So I hope this makes sense in terms of what the buck converter, why it's used compared to other circuits. And now let's do a circuit evaluation of of the buck converter. So if you remember when we dealt with RLC circuits, we considered that the first option we have to consider is when the switch is closed. And the second option we have to consider is when the, sh the switch is open. So we consider a closed switch and I'll read I'll redraw that here. So 
is V out, RL, C, L, and 5 volts. What we can say is that this V out is equals to VC or equals to VR. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a KVL right here. So by KVL, we would say negative VN, right? This 5 volts is VN plus the voltage across an inductor is L change in I over change in T plus V out, which again is VC or VR is equals to zero. Solving for V out, we get V out is equals to VN minus change in I over change in T times my inductance. And then we consider the second case when the switch is open, open switch. So that means that that diode will drag all my currents to ground or will start to dissipate my currents or pull my current to ground. So this is RL, this is C, this is L, this is VD. We consider that this is on. Um, the conventions is minus and plus here. So we can consider that VD is approximately zero volts. And if we did a, another KCL here, uh, sorry, KVL here, we would get minus L change in I over change in T plus V out is equals to zero, and V out is equals to L change in I over change in T. So we understand now that this is our first equation, and this is our second equation. But in order to fully get the results we want to obtain, we need to understand what duty cycles are. So we need to be able to write write our equations in terms of duty cycle. And if you're given a chart like this and you have something like that, you could say that the signal is on here and is off here. If you consider a time period of four milliseconds, so T is equal to four milliseconds, where this is on for one millisecond and this is off for three milliseconds, this is not drawn to scale, this is five volts. We could say that the duty cycle is T on divided by T. So in this example, the duty cycle is equals to one millisecond over four milliseconds, which is 25%. Um, or we say that this is 0 0.25 is equals to D. So now for the closed switched, so back to our equations, for the closed switch, we can say that a change in T is equals to T final minus T initial. And in this case, when the switch is closed, we're looking at from here, uh, zero to one. So one minus zero is equals to one. So my my duty cycle times my time is equals to 0 0.25 times 4, which is equals to 1. And for an open switch, J 
change in t is equals to uh, this is four and this here is one so the final is four minus one which is equals to three and here we consider one minus d times t which is one minus 0 0.25 times four which is equals to 0 0.75 times 4 is equals to 3. So now we can say from equation 1, again, we can rewrite. So this is, remember, this is equation 1 here. From equation 1, we can write that V out is equals to V in minus change in I over change in T times L. This here is DT. So we say that change in I is equals to, we can say, we can move this, we can move this guy to the right hand side and move the V out to the left hand side. So V in minus V out times DT over L. And we can also say from two that we have V out is equals to L change in I over change in T. So we know that in this situation, this is equals to one minus D times T. So if we solve for I, change in I will equals to V out 1 minus D times T over L. So now we have an equation for I here and an equation for I here. We can equate the two to each other. So this is V in minus V out times DT over L is equals to V out 1 minus D times T over L. Now, if we go ahead and solve for V out in terms of V in, what we do is we can distribute this, and we get DT over L V in minus V out DT over L. This is equals to V out times T over L, right, I'm distributing it to this one, and then everything distributed to this D is minus V out DT over L. If I add this to the right-hand side, it cancels out with this one. If I divide, if I multiply by L over T, I cancel these two out. So now V out is equals to D times Vn, and this is the final um, output equation of the voltage transfer function. And from my example, from example, V out is equals to 0 0.25, remember that was D in here, right here from this example, so which is equals to, or times five, which is equals to 1.25 volts. So you see, we've, we've dropped down the voltage by 1.25. But so you might be wondering as to yourself, what's the basic idea? What's the, the conclusion of this? So we could say the idea is, if you have a buck converter, and you supply it with five volts. And this is, maybe let's say there's a switch here. This goes to a switch, uh, like a 555 timer with 50% um, duty cycle. So again, that means that it's on 50% of the time and it's off 50% of the time. If you input five volts and it's pulling three amps of current and these are your outputs, 
we could say that V out is equals to V in times the duty cycle, which is equals to five times 0 0.5, which is 2.5. If we assume 80% efficiency, then uh, what's our power equals to? So power in is equals to P in, which is equals to V times I, which is equals to five times three, which is equals to 15 watts. Again, five times three is where we're getting that from. And our power out or P out is equals to 15. So it's equals to P in times efficiency. So which is equals to 15 times 0 0.8, which is equals to 12 watts. So now if we attach a load here, if we were to attach a load right here, we could say our V out is equals to this, but what's our I out? equals to and I out is equals to P out over V out which is equals to 12 watts over 2.5 volts which is equals to 4.8 amps and as you can see our V goes down by 2 and our I goes up by 1.6. So this is the basic idea or the general idea of a buck converter. I hope this makes sense. Please let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions. Please like, subscribe, and share my video. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.